Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys ACGHK figure preview video. Before we begin, I want to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for coming out with me in person to the convention and for snapping these gorgeous high res pictures along with these intro videos. Show Ryan some love in the comments below because without him, this series literally would not be possible. If you're looking to pre-order your very own copy of the Artisan Joker or the standard sculpted hair version, I have included some links to pop collectibles in the description below. As always, do your own research, make sure you're comfortable before buying. I've also added in the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys convention figure preview video goes live on the channel. Okay, now this is very interesting. Why Hot Toys decided to wait until Joker 2 was announced and we've had a bunch of trailers for it and it's going to be dropping in cinemas this year to finally give us a Joaquin Phoenix Joker from the first movie, I've got no idea. But what makes it even more interesting is that Inart have their own version of Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, but he comes in a four pack because they were adamant that Warner Brothers said, no, 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 the licensing mandate is it needs to be over 1000 US dollars, otherwise you can't make it. So there are a couple of possibilities with this, why Warner Brothers decided to change their mind on it. Number one, they didn't and Inart were lying. I personally don't think that's the case because they would have sold a hell of a lot more units if they could have priced it below a thousand and sold individual sets. So let's strike that one off the table. Number two, because Inart is licensed in China as well as a couple of other regions, it's a different license compared to what Hot Toys has, which is global. So maybe Warner Brothers, in terms of the region that Hot Toys were dealing with, they were perfectly fine with a single pack under a $1,000 price point. Then the third and final option is maybe they're using the Joker 2 license to give us this. We'll never really know, I don't think, unless someone from Warner Brothers or Todd Phillips or Joaquin or Inart or Hot Toys speaks on this topic. It's not very likely, so we'll just have to speculate. Let me know what you think happened down in the comments below. Just like what we're getting with the in-art version of Joaquin's Joker, the Hot Toys one comes with some seamless forearm switch outs as well. There's arm hair sculpted and painted on the surface. I dig the array of gestures. There's some dancing pose ones and some pointing ones as well. They've even gone so far as to paint on the cuticles just above the fingernails. These are probably the most detailed hands slash seamless forearms I've ever seen from Hot Toys. We did get one other set with the 1973 version of Days of Future Past Wolverine. They were beautiful, but these look even better in my opinion. We've got the vein work just underneath the arm hair, and I've got no idea how they made it look as realistic as they have. I'm not sure if the cigarette will be included with the final product. It's definitely mentioned as an accessory, and it's in multiple pictures. But traditionally, companies aren't really allowed to promote smoking and include cigarettes with their figures or statues. I know that Queen Studios had to remove the statue from their third scale Joaquin Phoenix Joker release. So it remains to be seen if this guy ends up coming with it or it gets removed closer to production. The display base is one of those stupid diamond bases. But this time they've used it in a very clever way. They've turned it on its side so it becomes like a right angle. And they've moved the nameplate from what would normally be the front to one of the side edges. I like this. I like the use of the diamond base for this figure because it's not super unwieldy with a point at every edge. It's become a right angle and it works with this diorama display base. It's much smaller footprint than what we're getting with Inart, so if you don't have the room for that massive stage diorama that we're getting with that figure, and you prefer to just pick up Red Suited Joker on his own, 
this could potentially be the Joaquin for you. Which is going to be the Joaquin for me? Well, both of them, of course. I'm going to pick up both sets and we'll do some comparisons and find out which one is the superior Joker. The base isn't really accurate to anything and it's not supposed to be. It's more so just a hodgepodge of iconic bits and pieces from the set of the Murray Franklin show. We've got the raised platform off the left. There's actual carpet on top of it with some printed checkered detail on it. You can have the chair on there if you wish, or you can have him on the lower part of the base, which is glossy, and there's a star on the ground. I'm pretty sure that would be one of the markers for when they're filming the show, because mics can't really move around everywhere and lighting is quite specific for these things, so it's a nice little deep cut. That would be where Joker stands to make sure he's lit correctly. Speaking of lights, we do have some on top of the base and an applause sign. The wood panel thing off the left with the Murray Franklin talk show logo on it, and the multicolored curtains. Moving on to Joker himself, currently sitting on the chair. This has to be a custom body for him. It's quite skinny, and he looks great sitting on that chair. Nothing is bunching up too much. The jacket is riding up a little, but nothing crazy. I love the tailoring, and I dig the color of the outfit. They haven't gone too vibrant with the red. A lot of companies, especially the third party ones, they struggled with this. They went super saturated with it. And while the actual screen use suit was pretty punchy, it, after the colour grading, dulled down a lot. The red looked more like a deep, rich burgundy wine red almost, as compared to fire engine red, which is what they were going for. The shirt looks accurate to me, I also like the colour and fit of the vest, but Hot Toys, please ditch the press studs for the cuffs of the shirt. They are far too bulky, and seeing as though you went to the effort of making the forearms seamless, so the wrists are clearly a focal point, you don't want to be distracted by some massive ugly press studs that are immersion breakers for figure photography. Maybe go with the metal clip mechanism that sits a lot more flush, like what Inart are doing with their suited figures. So how does the suit, the cut and fit of it, compare to the Inart version of Joker? It's close, but I still prefer the fit of the Inart suit. Something about their tailoring is just so perfect that it hugs the body in all the right places, whereas... The lapels on the Hot Toys jacket are starting to lift off the outfit, and the shirt collar is bunching up and it's sticking out of the top of the vest. You will be able to fut stuff and adjust it to get it to look as good as possible, but at the end of the day, we're all at the mercy of companies tailoring. So if the stitching is too big and the fabric is too thick so it doesn't lay right, there's nothing that we can really do about it. Fingers crossed it ends up looking absolutely perfect when this guy eventually releases. Let's talk about the rooted hair head sculpt first. Moving eyes? Absolutely. Real wool hair? Yep. But likeness? It's there from certain angles, and I do apologise for the lighting. At the convention, on the press table, the lights were awful. These figures were just bathed in shadow. But I saw it in person and I did like it, not quite as much as the Inart head sculpt, which I've also seen in person. Now that both of these companies are making Joaquin, you could, it would be very expensive to do this, but kit bash your ultimate 1 6 scale Joker. I'm not planning on doing that, I'm going to keep the company's releases as they are out of the box because that's how the artists intended them to be but it's definitely an option if you wanted to go down that route. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm really happy that we have another version of Joker by Hot Toys because competition is always a good thing. It means that these companies are fighting it out, trying to win over us as collectors, and therefore they're trying to outdo each other and make the best product possible. I'm not loyal to one company or the other. I love Inart and I love Hot Toys, but what I love more than both of them 
is incredible 1-6 scale figures. So they're both great, but I'm here for the best figures possible. The sculpted hair version does have its pros. Out of the box, you're not going to have to do anything with it. It's going to look exactly like this, no styling or futzing required. But it lacks the realism of the rooted hair one because it's just this big clump of green on his head. Whereas with the wool hair, you can kind of see through the strands and it adds some depth to the top of the head sculpt. I'm going with Rooted for my copy of Hot Toys Joker. But the sculpted hair one isn't a bad option at all. If you prefer sculpted hair, I don't blame you. This is how it's going to look like I've already said. And it might just be one of the better sculpted hair head sculpts I've seen with the individual dangling pieces of hair with gaps through them, and that gives you a different kind of depth around the sides and the back of the head sculpt. Overall, I am excited to see this, and I can't wait to get to comparisons when they both release the in-art and Hot Toys versions. Now, I've popped some links to Pop Collectibles in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. As always, do your own research, make sure you're comfortable before buying. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.